This is St. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Yahawashai, for he shall save his people from their sins. Okay, I want to start by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rachakwadash. Okay, Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the King and Savior of Israel, and Rachakwadash is the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter. All right, I want to give double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, who lead by example in these last days, and Shalom to the hopeful elect. Okay, all you Akim that are making your bodies a living sacrifice. All right, now, this lesson is going to be uh, who are his people, because you have a lot of uh, Bible study tools and different Bible dictionaries and even some of these these theologians that know the scripture somewhat they'll they'll quote scripture that is clearly talking about the nation of Israel but then to justify uh, the pagan religion of Christianity which is for everyone they'll they'll lie and say you know well his people is everyone or you know just just they'll introduce a lot of gray area and, and vague interpretation of the scriptures because when you read the scriptures it's clear that the Lord's people are Israel so we're, we're, we're going to go through some scriptures and prove uh, emphatically that the Lord's chosen people are the 12 tribes of Israel and no one else okay now uh, for those who don't know the Israelites are today known as you people of so-called Negro and Native Indian descent okay African American Cuban uh, Native American Haitian Dominican uh, Puerto Rican, so on and so forth. You you comprise the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel. You you are the Lord's chosen people. Okay, no one else. All right, unless you of course descend from one of these people. All right. Now before I move forward, I want to stay in the same book here. This is uh, Saint Matthew chapter two verse six. And now Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Right, and that governor is talking about Yahweh Shai Mashiach, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Okay, he is from the tribe of Judah. Okay, it tells you in Hebrews the seventh chapter, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. All right, it also tells you in St. Matthew the first chapter, it gives you his whole lineage. All right, he's a direct descendant of King David. All right, but it says uh, that governor shall rule my people Israel. All right, my people, Israel, the Lord's people are the Israelites. It tells you that all throughout the, the so-called New Testament. Okay, now we're going to go back to the books of Moses and, and further drive home that point. This is Exodus chapter 3, verse 10. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Okay, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Okay, now, this is 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 18. Now then do it, for Yahweh have spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I will save my people Israel, my people Israel, out of the hand of the Philistines, and out of the hand of all their enemies. So, again, you see another example of the Lord's people being Israel. It's not... This is not something that changes from book to book. It's it's extremely consistent, okay? And you see here, this is the Lord's delivering his people out of the hand of their enemies, okay? Not with the enemy, out of the hand of the enemies, okay? That's that's all throughout the scriptures. It even tells you in, uh, in St. Luke, I believe, that when you go into the definition of salvation, it's that we're going to be saved out of the hand of our enemies. That's what salvation is. So anyone telling you that salvation is for everyone clearly doesn't understand the definition of salvation, okay? Salvation is literally the, the Lord's people, Israel, being delivered from the heathen, okay? Not with the heathen. That's not in the scriptures, okay? This is Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. My people, my people Israel did not consider. So here you see the Israelites being referred to in a negative light, extremely negative light. He compares us to, to dumb animals, but he still calls us my people, all right? We're his people. Even when we're going off, even when we're committing iniquity, even when we deny him, we're still his people. That's how much the Heavenly Father loves his, his chosen seed, man, all right? Even when we're denying him, He's still calling us my people, all right? Another example, Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 22. For my people is foolish. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children, and they have none understanding. 
they are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. So this is another example of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai referring to his chosen people uh, in a negative light. This is extremely disparaging, all right? He says, my people are foolish, but he still calls us my people. We're still his people, okay? The word sadish means uh, foolish or stupid, all right? So he's insulting us, but at the same time, he's letting us know you're my people, all right? So this, this whole concept of, well, the Israelites went off, so the Lord replaced Israel with the Christian church, that's not in the scriptures, okay? That's that's not biblical, all right? The scriptures clearly tell you that the Lord does not, well, let me just read it, okay? Why well, talk about it when I can read it, all right? This is Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, and this is Apostle Paul speaking, this is the apostle to the Gentiles, all right? He's, he's writing this to the Gentiles in Rome, okay? And we're going to find out who those Gentiles are, all right? I say then, have the Most High cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So the Apostle Paul is an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. Now, the scriptures tell you that Apostle Paul is a Roman, meaning he has citizenship in the land of Rome. Okay, but Rome is not a biblical nationality. Rome is just a, an empire. Okay, just like you have the, uh, the Greek captivity. There, there's no such thing as an actual Greek person. Greek is a name that was adopted by... Uh, by Alexander and uh, the, the ruling class of the Greeks were Edomites okay but you also had Jake that were Hellenized Hellenized Jews that were also being called Greeks in the New Testament okay Greek is not a race it's just a, a title like American all right someone can be an American that doesn't mean that they're a specific race okay or European or, or Brazilian okay or, or Australian these are all countries okay they they don't denote what seed you're from, all right? Any any manner of person can be an American. That doesn't that doesn't specify what seed you're from. Apostle Paul specifically says, "For I am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham," all right, of the seed. Okay, you can be an American and and be an Israelite, an Edomite, a Moabite. This is uh, they call it the melting pot, which is going to be a melting pot very soon when those missiles hit. Okay, but all sorts of ethnic groups are in America, just like Greece. You had all sorts of ethnic groups. Okay. So when you go into scriptures, Apostle Paul is distinguishing uh, his Roman citizenship from, from his actual nationality, okay? And it says, have the Most High cast away his people, God forbid. Now, Romans the 11th chapter is opening with the Lord has not cast away his people, but yet you have these people in these, these so-called churches, they'll use this chapter to say that the Most High cast away his people. They'll just skip right over the first verse, all right, as usual. All right, but let's keep going. It says, the Most High have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to the Most High against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed the prophets and dig down nine altars, and I am left alone. They seek my life. But what saith the answer of Yahweh unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Now, this is Apostle Paul quoting the so-called Old Testament, which we know as the Law and the Prophets, okay? The, the writings of our forefathers, which this entire Bible is the Law and the Prophets, but that's another lesson, all right? Uh, he's quoting, well, let's just read it. This is 1 Kings 19 and 14. Let's see who the Heavenly Father is talking about here. And he said, I have been very jealous for Yahweh, power of hosts, because the children of Israel, the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. I want to jump down to verse 18. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which have not kissed him. So you see here Romans 11 and 4, when Apostle Paul is quoting 1 Kings, he says, I have reserved unto myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee unto Baal. But then he's quoting 1 Kings, which says, yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel. It specifies, all right? When the scriptures speak of Israel going off and worshiping idols, the Heavenly Father says uh, he reserved a remnant. There's that constant word, uh, a remnant, over and over again. But the remnant is of Israel, all right? The Heavenly Father didn't reserve 5,000 Edomites and 2,000 Moabites, all right, or, or uh, 7,000 Ishmaelites. The, the Heavenly Father reserved 7,000 
in Israel. That's plain, okay? So anyone saying, well, well, Israel turned to idols, so the Lord looked over this. No, it's telling you what the nation is. It's telling you what the remnant is. The remnant is Israel, okay? Now, before I get into that, I want to just jump down and stay in Romans 11 right quick. Romans 11, verse 7. What then? Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Now, again, this is a scripture that, that could be twisted to say, well, well, since Israel turned their back, the elect is everyone now. No, 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 no. We're going we're gonna to prove that the, the elect uh, is still Israel, all right? First of all, let's find out who is blinded. This is Isaiah chapter 44, verse 18. They have not known nor understood, for he hath shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. So who is the they? Who is the they in Isaiah 44? Let's, let's start from the top. Okay, this is Isaiah chapter 44, verse 1. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Jacob, my servant, and Israel, who I have chosen. Okay, so the rest that were blinded were wicked Israelites. Okay, the rest that were blinded were Israelites, and the election is Israel. Okay, the Israel of the Most High. All right, like it tells you in Galatians. All right, there's... There's basically two generations of Israel. There's Israel that's that's going to follow the Messiah because we've been purified by his blood, okay, by believing on him, all right? And then you have everyone else, the two-thirds, okay, which they're still his people, all right? The scriptures clearly tell you that even when Israel's going off, they're still his people, all right? Now, I want to get, since I'm in Romans, I want to get Romans 9 right quick. This is Romans chapter 9, verse 24. Even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also the Gentiles. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, I, I guess the, the Heavenly Father, His chosen people are Israel and then other nations too. Now, I could stop reading right here, but that would make me no different than these Baptists, these Methodists, or all of these liars that call themselves Christians. Let's, let's read the very next line and see who these Gentiles are. This is, I mean, really... Brothers going to the Greek, we go into the different, you know, the Strong's Concordance. But really, Apostle Paul, when you when you really read what he's saying, he's breaking down exactly who the Gentiles are. All right, this is the, the very next verse, verse 25. As he saith also in Hosea, I will call them my people, my people which were not my people, and her beloved which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. There shall they be called the children of the living power. Now, Apostle Paul starts by saying, as he saith also in Hosea, all right? Apostle Paul constantly says, as it is written, as he saith, as also. What he's doing is he's quoting the prophets, okay? He's, he's telling you the precepts, so to speak. He's telling you, look, when you search the scriptures, this is what I'm talking about. This is what that prophet was talking about. This is what's going on, all right? It's all... It's all working to the same end, which is the salvation of the nation of Israel. All right, but let's let's see what scripture he's quoting. Let's see who who these Gentiles are. Hosea chapter one verse ten. Yet the number of the children of Israel of Israel shall be the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living power. Now. This is talking about America, all right? Because when you go into scriptures, all of our previous captivities, including the Roman captivity, our people knew that they were Israelites, all right? The people that, the, the Israelites that rejected the Messiah, all right, who were being, uh, a lot of them were being called Jews at the time because they were from the tribe of Judah. They were from the Southern Kingdom, which uh, pertains to Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. They, even the ones that rejected the Messiah, they still knew they were Israelites, okay? The Assyrian captivity, we knew we were Israelites. The Greek captivity, even when we were being Hellenized, you had a remnant that was fighting that, which are, are the uh, the Jews in the New Testament. So this is talking about now, all right? Apostle Paul said there had to be a falling away first. We we weren't called the children of the Most High here. We were called, <laughs> we were called everything under the sun, all right? Niggas, uh, colored, African-American, Puerto Rican, Mexican, Native, Native American, savages, Indians. It just just everything but a child of God, like they say, you know? But this this is where we're being called the Israelites again in, in our final captivity, okay? And this is what Apostle Paul was quoting in Romans 9. He's 
immediately after saying not only of the Jews, but also of the Gentiles, he quotes Hosea. He tells you that those Gentiles are the Israelites, the children of Israel, which shall be at the sand of the sea, we're, we're not being called Israelites, all right? He he tells you clearly who the Gentiles are, all right? If you, if you have ears to hear, this is plain, okay? So again, even when we're going off, when we're not obeying our power, we're still his people, even when we're uh, disobeying him, man. That's how much love he has for us. Now, how much love do you have for him? When you find out you're an Israelite, do you, do you repent sincerely? Okay, do you come back to the Heavenly Father in supplication? All right, keeping the commandments to the best of your ability, being a brother to the best of your ability, proclaiming and professing Yahweh Shai Mashiach, all right, his only begotten son, because you can't get to the Father unless you go through the Son, all right? Now, I want to get into more scriptures. Uh, this is 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 13. And I will dwell among the children of Israel, and I will not forsake my people Israel. My people Israel, all right? The Lord's not going to forsake us, all right? Even, even though the majority of his people have forsaken him, he's not going to forsake Israel. Why? Because we're his people, okay? Point blank, period. This is First Chronicles 17 and 10. And since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, my people Israel, moreover, I will subdue all thine enemies. Furthermore, I tell thee that Yahweh will build thee in house. Okay, so again, my people Israel my people Israel anyone telling you that the Lord's chosen people are, are someone other than Israel you would have to prove that through the scriptures okay I, I'd be very interested in seeing that uh, that precept okay this is Psalms 81 verse 8 here O my people my people and I will testify unto thee O Israel if thou will hearken unto me there shall no strange God be in thee neither shalt thou worship any strange God I am Yahweh, thy power, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken unto my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own hearts' lusts, and they walked in their own counsel. Right. Again, my people Israel. He's referring to us in a negative light because we transgressed the law, statutes, and commandments. We turned our face from him, so he turned his face from us. But he's still referring to us as his people, Israel, because we are. We're his people, man, all right? As much as a lot of you heathen don't like it, we're the Lord's chosen people, man. You, you're gonna you're gonna find that out very soon, which you're already finding it out, but you're just trying to deny it. I mean, nobody wants to go into hardcore slavery, I get it, but you know, it is what it is. Like you tell us, uh, get over it. it, hey, you get over it. It's your turn now to, to live out the advice that you've been giving the Lord's chosen people for the past 500 years, all right? You told us to just get over it. Well, now it's your turn. You can you can be the change that you want to see in the world. All right. You can be an example of everything that you've been telling us. OK, get over slavery. Now, this is Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 30. Thus shall they know that I, Yahweh, their power am with them. And they, even the house of Israel, are my people. Even the house of Israel are my people, saith Yahweh power. Now, that's plain. I don't. I don't know any how do you get around that okay it's straight and to the point okay now i could stop here but i'm not i'm going to keep going this is jeremiah chapter 30 verse 1 the word that came unto jeremiah from yahweh saying thus speaketh yahweh power of israel the power of israel saying write thee all the words that i've spoken unto thee in a book for lo the days cometh saith yahweh that i will bring again the captivity of my people israel my people Israel and Judah, saith Yahweh, and I will cause of them to return to the land that I gave their fathers, and they shall possess it. Okay, now this is this is the prophet Jeremiah prophesying of, of the salvation of Israel, man. And again, we're his people, okay? That's plain. This is Jeremiah 31 and 33. This is going into the new covenant, okay? But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahweh. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and I will be their power and they shall be my people. Okay, now when you go into the new covenant, the new covenant is all throughout the, the so-called Old Testament. This is why one of the many reasons I don't like using the phrase Old Testament, New Testament, because it's all it's all one word. Okay, the, the so-called New Testament is not that's not anywhere. 
that page that you get to right after Malachi in most Bibles, where it's a, it's a blank sheet of paper in New Testament, that's not of Yahweh Bashimel Shai. No prophet ever wrote this is the Old Testament. The, the, the actual New Testament is all throughout the books of, of Deuteronomy, uh, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, okay, Hosea. It's all throughout the scriptures. So when you when you see that phrase, uh, I will be their power or I will be their God and they shall be unto me a people, that's repeated uh, frequently whenever Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is talking about uh, the everlasting salvation of the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? We're his people and, and he's our power, all right? All right, now I want to get into Hebrews, the eighth chapter, which is quoting Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. This is going into the details of the new covenant, okay? For finding fault, this is verse eight. For finding fault with them, who is them? His people, Israel, okay? For finding fault with them. That's another thing. The heavenly father didn't find fault with the laws. The laws are perfect, but our flesh was made subject unto vanity. All right, we went off. The law is is, is pure, all right? Scriptures clearly tell you that the law is pure, all right? It's, it's a light. It's our, it's, our, um, it's our wisdom in the sight of the nations, okay? There's nothing wrong with the law. We went off, not the law, all right? For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, okay? The house of Israel is talking about the, uh, the northern kingdom, which today are called uh, so-called indigenous people, uh, native Native Indians, Puerto Ricans, Mexicans, so on and so forth, Cubans, etc. So-called Latinos. That's the the northern kingdom of Israel, and Judah. Judah is the the southern kingdom. All right. Even in West Africa, when you look at certain maps, they'll show you uh, kingdom of Judah or kingdom of Ayuda. All right. That's so-called Negroes. All right. Uh, verse 9, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant and regarded them not, saith Yahweh. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a power, and they shall be to me a people. Right. The Heavenly Father's chosen people are the Israelites, okay? When you deal with the old covenant, and the new covenant is for the same people, the house of Israel and the house of Judah, all right? The 12 tribes of Israel, that nothing changes, all right? There's no scripture where the heavenly father says, look, I'm not dealing with y'all anymore. I'm gonna deal with Esau. I'm gonna deal with Moab. I'm gonna deal with Ammon. I'm gonna deal with Israel. That's, that's not scriptural, all right? It tells you in, uh, in Galatians, the third chapter, the 15th verse, that you can't add or disannul the covenant, all right? Nothing can be added to it or taken from it. It, it tells you that plainly in Galatians, the third chapter. So. When you deal with the scriptures, you have to understand that the Heavenly Father doesn't change. He actually tells you in, uh, in Malachi, the third chapter, for I'm Yahweh, I change not. And then it tells you in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, that his son doesn't change either. Yahweh Shai Mashiach, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if the Heavenly Father doesn't change, and his people are the Israelites, and his son doesn't change, and his people are the Israelites, where's the confusion coming in? All right, the scriptures tell you that the Most High is not the author of confusion. The scriptures are plain and extremely, extremely repetitive. So for you to teach another doctrine outside of the Lord's chosen people being Israel, you're of Satan, okay? Point blank period. There's no, you, you can't come in some other way. There's so many other precepts that cut you off. It's like, okay, no, nah, no. Nah. This is Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 26. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them, and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forever. My tabernacle also shall be with them, yea, I will be their power, and they shall be my people. My people. Verse 28, here's the point. And the heathen shall know that I, Yahweh, do sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Now, again, this is going into the New Covenant, which this scripture not only proves that the New Covenant is only for Israel, it specifies in the last verse that the heathen, the other nations outside of Israel, they're going to know that Yahweh sanctifies Israel. The word sanctify means to make separate, to make holy, to sever, okay? The heathen are going to know that we're severed, we're separate from them, all right? They're going to know it. it it's not going to be... Uh, this equality, everybody's coming together. There's no longer going to be, well, I don't, I don't really know. That might be a Jake. 
that his father might be from South Italy. There's not going to be any confusion. The heathen are going to know, look, these are the Israelites. These are the heathen. There's going to be a clear uh, divide there. All right. Thus saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. The covenant is for Israel. The heathen are going to know that the covenant is for Israel because the Heavenly Father is going to sanctify us. All right. Let's further prove that. This is Isaiah chapter 59, verse 20. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion. Okay. The Redeemer is talking about Yahweh Shai Mashiach. All right. Who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. His, his real name is Yahweh Shai. He's the Redeemer. He. He is the sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice. He pleased the Heavenly Father. And through his blood being shed and us believing on him, we're being purified and cleansed, okay? The elect, all right, that's gonna endure to the end, we're being redeemed by Yahweh Shai Mashiach, the Redeemer. And it says, the prophecy says, the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith Yahweh, okay? So the Heavenly Father is being extremely specific. It says, from them, that term from transgression in Jacob. Okay, Jacob is a seed, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That seed line is gonna turn from transgression. That's talking about redemption. It's talking about repentance, okay? And repentance is only for Israel. All right, it tells you in Acts chapter five, verse 31, that Yahweh Shai, the redeemer, okay, is redeeming those that turn from transgression, okay? Repentance, all right, repentance is for Israel. That, that's, that's plain, okay, next verse. As for me, this is my covenant with them. With who? With them that turn from transgression in Jacob, the Israelites, all right? The Israelites of the Most High, the elect, all right? This is my covenant with them, saith Yahweh. My spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, saith Yahweh, from henceforth and forever. So, the covenant is only for Israel. We just read that, okay? The Redeemer came to Zion, which is Israel, to turn away transgression from Jacob, which is Israel. His people, okay? His people are the Israelites, the people that that sin. Okay, what is sin? First John 3 and 4. Sin is the transgression of the law. Who is the law given to? Israel. So who can sin? Israel. Who needs to repent and turn from sin? Israel. Them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith Yahweh, okay, his people, all right? This is Revelation 21, and I'm going to start at the top, but I want to get into this, uh, we shall be his people and he shall be our power. Let's find out who that's talking about. And I saw, verse 1, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the Most High out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power. Right, now it says his people, New Jerusalem. Now, even though that's plain, you have these pagans, they'll say, well, well look, New Jerusalem is talking about the, the Christian church, which technically it is, okay? The word Christian means anointed, and the word church, church means called out, okay? It's from the Greek word uh, ecclesia. So who are, the, who are the Christians of the Bible? They were the Israelites that were following the Messiah. Who was anointed? The Israelites that were anointed by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, all right? The Christians are Israelites. When you read the scripture, that's clear. So New Jerusalem is not a new race of people. New Jerusalem are the Israelites that have been uh, cleansed by the word, that have been purified and delivered out of the destruction that the same book of Revelation is talking about. But this word new in the Greek is kainos, which means refreshed or made new, all right? The New Jerusalem is the same people, okay? The Israelite, let, let's prove that. Same book. Let's jump down to verse 12, okay? And had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates. Let's find out what's on these 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. That's plain, man. That's, that's super plain. It's in the same chapter talking about New Jerusalem coming down, it tells you that New Jerusalem is the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. It tells you that the kingdom of heaven, on the gates of heaven, there's 12 gates 
written on the gates are the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. It's plain. James 1 and 1, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. The so-called New Testament is written to the 12 tribes. The kingdom of heaven is for the 12 tribes. The Lord's people, his people, are the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. You can't get around that, man. What else can be said, all right? Does the Lord literally have to come out and say, well, look, I'm, I'm the God of Israel and none else? Because he does. All right, let's read, let's read that. This is Joel chapter 2, verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am Yahweh, your power, and none else, and none else, and my people, who were his people? He's in the midst of Israel, and my people shall never be ashamed. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachakwadash, Shalom.